I mean, you better not to uh, getting this on the please. Okay, uh, this is uh, 11 as one actually. Uh, I'm having total 10 years of experience. Uh, in that five years uh, from manufacturing se sector, the five years as a functional consultant in ERP. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, mute everyone who is uh, getting raised on. Muted. Okay, today we are going to see uh, introduction about HAP HANA. So, okay. As you know, uh, HAP HANA is a uh, high performance analytic enabling appliance. So, when we say that appliance, so it comes with a uh, the software with HANA and then it is delivered in the hardware. Both hardware and software combines and we call it an appliance. So if you see the business intelligence overview over here, you have different uh, data coming from different source systems. So you have flat files, you have Excel, you have applications, you have XML data. All this data comes in uh, into SAP business objects data services. Uh, data services is a, a product from SAP. It is used for EPL, extract, transformation, and load. Now here, what, the data that we get from different sources, we uh, do, we apply different transforms, we do uh, data sensing, and then we load to the target. Now in this case, we can load to SAP Sybase IQ. Now Sybase IQ is the other product from SAP Sybase. Now it's a uh, analytic uh, database. We have SAP HANA over there. Now SAP HANA is in memory database where all the data is primarily stored on uh, memory, the VRAM. Now SAP BW is another uh, <coughs> data warehousing solution from SAP. It's called Enterprise Data Warehouse. Uh, enterprise Data Warehouse means it gets data from different systems and then we can uh, do reporting on there or any other traditional databases. Now from there once you get data from different uh, source systems and then you import to any of these uh, Solutions you can use BI platform. Now SAP Business Objects BI platform is where uh, it's called as uh, uh, reporting tools. Now you can generate report on these uh, databases. Now information steward is another product from Business Objects. It's used for data governance. Now you can uh, so this is the middleware. Now this is the source system. Now you basically going to load all the data into data services to the middleware and see uh, what is HANA. Let's try to understand. So HANA is an in-memory. Uh, data platform. Now either it can be on cloud or it, it can be on, on premises. Now all the data that normally it stores on uh, this space RBDMX but in this space stores in, in memory DB, in memory DB. So when we say it is in memory DB, all the data stores on VRAM, not on disk. Now if you see uh, the SAP HANA uh, the architecture here you can see SAP NetWeaver business clients, SAP business object solutions used for reporting and then uh, it can directly connect to SAP HANA. Now in here you have information composer uh, which is an end user modeling tool. Uh, end users basically use information composer. You have planning and calculation engine. Now planning and now you have a product called integrated planning where you do uh, planning based uh, planning where uh, the integrated planning is used in BW for planning purpose. Also you have other products called BPC, business planning consolidation. Now even BPC can be run on HANA. So all the applications, all the uh, that you do in BPC will directly uh, use SAP HANA as its database. Now you can also do real time replication services. Now we, we have something called SLP, system landscape transformation. Now using SLP you can do real time uh, uh, real time loading of data which uses a trigger based technology to do, to do that and then you can also use uh, Sybase SRS. Now Sybase SRS uh, uh, it, it uses, uses something called log based. It directly replicates data but 
the different series SLT uses for non SAP as well as SAP. Sybase is optimized, Sybase uh, SRS is optimized to load uh, data from uh, non SAP systems. Also, you can use the application services HTML5. Now, as you know, HANA is being evolved, uh, uh, so you, you have different uh, service apps in it. SP1, SP2, SP3, SP4, and SP5 is even released. So in SP5, you can uh, uh, directly, uh, directly can use JavaScript or HTML5 on SAP HANA. Now you can also use a predictive analysis. Now predictive analysis is to uh, it's a data mining tool where you can analyze uh, uh, big data. Now uh, in-memory database, as you know, HANA is an in-memory database. You can also do search text unstructured data, also you can uh, have R integrated, you can also have Hadoop, Hadoop is mainly for big data, you can also have uh, data services which is an uh, again ETL that we have seen here on the top data services. It's an ETL tool but uh, data services uh, uses batch processing to load data. So here you have business suit, now business suit is where it's a part of uh, uh, SAP, now SAP business suit in the sense it has Applications from uh, customer relationship management, we have enterprise resource planning, we have supply chain management, we have product lifecycle management. So all these come under this suite of applications. And also you can connect third party applications like uh, if you want to get data from uh, different systems like Oracle or MSQL, you can either integrate with service SRS or you can use SQP and get data in SQP HANA in real time. So once you get data in uh, real time, you can also report using business objects, solutions, where you have uh, web intelligence, uh, uh, dashboard designer. So you will see all those tools become inspect. You also have Excel integration directly you can use Excel to report on SAP HANA. Now come here to the next slide. Here you can see different offerings that SAP provides. And then you have an architecture uh, on the top where you have SAP, uh, HANA platform, you have HANA apps for suit, you have HANA accelerators, slowdown HANA, BW on HANA, business one on HANA, business two on HANA, which is recent released. You have HANA new, new app. So these are the, so for all, all these things, so below, below are the solutions that you have. Now here uh, you can use business suit and then Business suit data can be used to you can report in some BI reporting tool from business suit. Now from there uh, you have different uh, solutions for here. What are, what are the HANA offerings for this? You have SAP HANA DB. You have business objects BI visual intelligence tool, which is again a reporting tool, text and predictive analysis that can be done here. And then you have uh, HANA apps for suit. Here you have. Uh, Sales analysis for retail, liquidity risk management, social sentiment analysis, sales pipeline analysis. Now these are the part of SAP HANA RDS. Now, what is RDS? RDS is something called uh, rapid deployment solutions. Now whenever, whenever you buy RDS, uh, it has a predefined content. When you start installing RDS, if you uh, start building the application system, it's going to take longer time. But SAP uh, rapid deployment solutions are provided by SAP. You can just install them and uh, you can start using the. Uh, it has reports, it has uh, inbuilt uh, ETL, it has the data modeling. So, all this we have universes, which is from Vivo. So, all these objects are provided by SAP as a package. You just need to install and then start using them. So if any additional customization you have, you can also customize them. But the only thing is, the implementation time will get shorter if you use RDS. And then in HANA accelerators, again you have a CRM customer segmentation of COPA, profitability analysis. So these are, these, are, these are the different applications that we have here. And also you have uh, HANA on cloud, you have business intelligence on demand. Now when you use business intelligence on demand, uh, it is basically for reporting. So you are reporting on cloud solutions. Also, the other cloud solutions you have, sales operation planning, supplier infonet, so all these solutions are on the cloud. So, what are we trying to analyze here is uh, what are the different applications available on a broader perspective. 
So you also have a BW on HANA. Now as you know, a BW is an enterprise data warehouse. Uh, previously it was running on Oracle. So what does it mean? It can be run on HANA. Basically implement of uh, when you try to report, when you are reporting, it improves the reporting performance. Also you have business consolidation on HANA. Now business consolidation is a planning tool. You also have a business one. Now business one is a uh, application for uh, small scale businesses. Now you can do uh, uh, reporting as well as uh, it, it can business one can basically balance. It's an OLTP system, but also you can do uh, uh, analytics on the same system. No need to have a different warehouse where you want to get data and then report. Now you could not have uh, an enterprise data warehousing solution, even though you can do reporting on the OLTP systems. Also you have business suit on HANA. Now business suit on HANA is recently released. Uh, HANA New Analytics, it is called Shaft. Uh, Shaft is uh, nothing but uh, where you can do OLTP as well as uh, OLAP on uh, a single database. No need to have uh, uh, extract confirmation and load to different systems. No need to have loading from source to target. You can directly report, you can directly report on the source table, okay? the OLTP. So previously uh, we used to have two systems. One system for uh, one system for the transaction loads and other system for analytical loads. Now in case of HANA, both can be done in the same system. So here you have different uh, applications like ERP, CRM, SEM, with business tools. Now all these applications directly run on SAP HANA database. So also you can build new apps on HANA. So these are the, uh, this is the overall perspective that uh, that uh, HANA can support. It can support as a HANA platform, it can support HANA activated, HANA can be deployed on cloud, BW can use, BW can be the, the HANA as a database. Now business one on HANA for small scale, business two for large, large scale customers. And also you can build apps on HTTP HANA. <coughs> so if you see, these are all the different applications, but all of them use HANA DB as common. Here you have HANA-DB, you have HANA-DB, you have HANA-DB. So it is relevant for everyone. Now, people who know BW can go for BW on HANA. People who know Business One can go for Business One on HANA. People who know Business Suit, suppose say they know HD. Now people who are uh, very good in CRM. Now they, they can also learn HANA. Uh, people uh, who are good at reporting the subjects BI, they, they also have to, I mean, they also have to learn HANA for reporting. So HANA is basically a database. Now all these applications run on HANA database. Now what is HANA database? It is an in-memory solution. It's an in-memory solution. So HANA, whatever you store, uh, whatever you store, and whatever data that you store on HANA, it basically stores on PM, not on disk. So you can see here, uh, see the uh, this is the real-time data platform. Now SAP, moving forward, SAP is going to have a data platform that is real-time. Now in, in middle, if you have, if you see, you have, uh, if you have, you have SAP HANA platform. Now you have SAP Sybase, you have Sybase, and SAP Sybase SQL. Now we talked about anywhere, which is for the mobile applications. Now you can, you can have SAP Sybase AAC. AAC, AAC is optimized for uh, transaction loads for high availability. SAP Sybase ESP for uh, event stream processing. Now SAP Sybase IQ, it's a column oriented uh, uh, disk based database mainly for uh, reporting on archival of data. This is for mobile, this is to report on archival of data. Sybase ESP, it is to, it is a, uh, Basically, for uh, complex uh, event stream processing, whenever an event are triggered at the source, those events can be captured in HANA and you can do real-time reporting. But also you have Sybase AC, which is uh, uh, popular for uh, high availability. It's also an OLTP system. Now, down you have SAP Sybase Application Server, which is also called as FRS, now Sybase Application Server. 
can uh, connect from source to target. Now, now it, it can connect to Oracle and then get data to different systems in real time. This is mainly for real time. So how SAP HANA is going to use cyber security in service? Now if you have a OLTP system, now you want to get to HANA platform. Now you can use cyber security server, get data from different non SAP systems, pump data into SAP HANA. Now you also have SAP data services, so as you know SAP data services is mainly an ETL tool which is batch processing. Now it can also do real time but it is mostly optimized to do ETL processing. Also you have SAP MDG, MDM, master data governance and master data management. Now we want to do master data consolidation, we have this solution over here. So this comes under SAP Smart Data Services platform. Also you have Hadoop, Hadoop is for big data, for unstructured data. Now Hadoop can handle the big data and unstructured data and push into SAP. Also you have a common modeling called Sages Power Designer, which is to manage uh, uh, enterprise uh, architecture where you can you have a, a uniform modeling tool and then you have a common landscape management you can do the management of all these solutions and then you have uh, SAP NetWeaver on premise and cloud as you know SAP NetWeaver uh, previously it was on premise now it can also run on cloud on the front end you have SAP business tool to the application, SAP Business Warehouse, Enterprise Data Warehousing, SAP Big Data Applications, SAP Analytics, SAP Mobile. Now, SAP Mobile, uh, SAP has its mobile, own mobile solution for it and combined with the uh, business object BI mobile solution. Let's come to the next slide. Let's take a look. Now, as you know, day by day, there is uh, an, increase, an increase in data. Data is becoming more and more, if you see uh, 10 years back, we did, we did not have uh, a larger number of uh, records generated in business uh, solutions. Now, if you see, uh, data is being uh, uh, generated. Now, those data, if you try to analyze on relational disk, it is going to take longer time because the disk has a bottleneck over there. Now, whenever you try to access data from a disk, it has to, uh, it has to basically, uh, uh, it has something called RPM revolutions per second. Now based on that RPM, it reads the data and then gives to the memory and then uh, from memory it, it has to go to the CPU. From CPU it is going to come to the front end. Now this has a bottleneck. It's not, now if you see from last 10 years what is the, uh, what, what is the change that has been made to the disk, there is not much advancements. But if you see the uh, RAM, when you store data on RAM and when you store data on disk, when you try to access data on RAM, it is thousand times, or or it is uh, more than uh, thousand to ten thousand times more performance than directly accessing data from disk. Now, when you whenever you have a huge number of records or a huge number of data that you want to access to your input, now when you store on RAM, now it can be very faster than uh, disk-based RDBMS. So HANA is uh, in-memory-based uh, RDBMS. So whatever data that we are going to access, it is residing on DRAM, not on disk. Now this is a traditional analytics that we are going to do. So in the traditional analytics, what are we doing? We are going to copy data from source, do ETL, copy the data to data warehousing, and then create index, to into the performance aggregates, aggregates to consolidate data, uh, to give uh, uh, instead of aggregates when you do, it doesn't have detailed data, but it consolidates, summarizes, then it is passed on to the query results and then again you do caching. Now these are the different layers that you basically use on a traditional layer. These are the different landscape layers that you are using. Now what is the disadvantage of this is it basically lose granularity. Why it lose granularity? Because uh, data is aggregated. Now if you, if you take, uh, if you see the disk, disk has reached its limits. Now there is there is no much significant uh, improvement or uh, no much improvement in uh, disk space. Now whenever data is stored on disk, it requires a store huge number of uh, records or if you store huge number of files on disk. Now in order to pass pass a disk faster, you need to uh, have uh, more hardware. 
So also uh, you have a latency between data creation and analytics. Now data creation is on OLTP system. Now you have to do batch processing. Now only after the business cover, we are going to do ETL, get into data warehousing. Now from there, uh, you basically uh, create index, do aggregates, performance tuning, performance tuning, and get data to the reporting. This is what we are doing in uh, traditional uh, uh, analytics. Now in memory analytics, now let us see the in memory analytics. So in the future, uh, so this is the cost of this now. Now a terabyte of uh, RAM, a terabyte of RAM now costs $4,900. Now maybe less by now uh, because uh, RAM uh, prices fluctuate uh, every month. Uh, for that matter, sometimes even days. So you see in 1990s, the disk was costing, and the memory, there's a huge difference between a disk cost and the memory cost. Now if you see now, now disk and memory, uh, there's no much price difference for a terabyte here. Now, so what, it, what actually uh, makes the difference is, obviously if you want to uh, store data on memory, it's going to cost you a lot. At the same time, in 2012, if you want to store the data on memory, it's going to cost you less. So even though you have a software in 1990s, even suppose say you, are, you already have an in-memory database or in 1990s, the customers have to go uh, and implement this. Now what is it? A huge IT budget has to be allocated. Now in this case, in 2012, the same uh, RAM that was passed in 1990, the prices are decreased. Now, so this is the time for in-memory solutions because the RAM prices are basically decreasing. Now, what does this mean is when you store data on disk, simple, when you store data on disk, it's going to take longer time. The same data if you store on memory, it's going to take shorter time. The only reason is disk is a bottleneck because it has RPM. It has to rotate and get data. It's a disk disk. Now, in memory, it is, a, it is a quite faster then you try to act for this. So this is the speed that you have in here. So disk based, it is going to take this nanoseconds and then it's memory based. So there is almost a uh, lot of uh, difference between the axis of data from disk based to the memory based solution. Now if you see the HANA, it's called a high performance analytic appliance. Now you have an in memory computing engine, you have a calculation engine to calculate, you have data management services. So SAP HANA is nothing but a in-memory database, which has a calculation engine, it has in-memory computing engine also, you have a studio to access database. Now what is HANA as an appliance? A software plus hardware is nothing but an appliance. So in-memory computing engine is a software that is provided by SAP. So hardware can be provided from different vendors. Now uh, you can buy a hardware and then uh, if you try to uh, order a software from SAP, it doesn't give you. Because SAP basically gives the software to the preferred partners. Now those partners install the software on this hardware and then uh, they basically ship to the customer. That's why it's called as appliance. So software plus hardware. Ship as an appliance to the customers. Now, let us try to analyze uh, why HANA is faster. Now, one of the reasons is it's a column based. Now, what does it mean? It's a column based, a row based. Now, let us see. Now, suppose say this is a row based. Now, if I'm trying to find an invoice, I need to go for each file and then search, 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 and then try to take out, take out the invoice from here. Now in this case, in my wife's filing system, so suppose it's a column based, now I arrange all these files properly here, and then I give, I give them a label. Now invoices are basically stored, uh, stored in the shelf. So it is easier, easier to pick up the data. Now whenever data is stored in the column based, now data is compressed. So even when, when you try to access data from the column, column base, it is fast because it doesn't have to go to the all the rows and all the columns in the table. 
search for those records. Now, when you try to report on a row based, it has no request will go sequentially. When you try to report on a column based, it goes parallel. It goes to the column, search it for the data, and use the output. Now, in this way, when storing in the database, when storing data in the database, it actually has a compression. Now, when you have a compression, what, what does it happen? Now, suppose say you are storing, you are having one terabyte of data that is stored on disk. The same one terabyte of data when you try to uh, store on uh, memory, it basically compressed to a 10x factor, maybe 100 GB. Or one, from one terabyte, it goes to, to uh, 100 GB. So there is a 10x compression. Now, in this way, uh, you can store say, you can store you can have tables in a column base. One is when a uh, table is put in a column base, it has a compression. When you have a compression, it means you don't have to have higher memory. You can have a smaller memory. Now, then if you store the same amount of data from disk to the memory, one terabyte of disk maybe cost you around. We have seen on the top. Now, the same price you need to uh, get for the memory. So, the cost of uh, the cost of hardware we are trying to reduce by doing compression. Same way. We are trying to do reporting, it is faster because it, go, it only goes to the same column and tries to pick up the data. It doesn't go to all the columns and search for the data. Now SAP HANA, new landscape. So what is the new landscape that we have? So this, is, this is the new uh, landscape. So here this is the traditional analytics. So you have different layers, you need to process data. And then aggregates, caching and then reporting. But in this case, you can directly access data in memory. So data will be stored on RAM and directly is available to the reporting. What does this mean? You are reducing the layers. You are reducing the redundant storage of data. Now, summary. What is the summary of this? So multi-core CPUs. So, one board can have multiple CPUs, each CPU can have multiple cores. Now, when you try to do massive parallel processing, or mass, massive parallel processing is suppose say, you have a column called customer, now uh, you have uh, about 1 billion customers in a customer column. Now the customer column is going to get partitioned. Now, few cores and few uh, processes or RAM will be allocated to that particular uh, uh, particular sector and then you can read data parallelly from the same column. So this is, this is called massive parallel processing. So in massive parallel processing you can have multiple core CPUs and multiple CPUs on each motherboard and one CPU can have multiple cores in it. Now also you can store tables in row and column store. Now column store as you know there's task for it because it goes to the uh, column that you are trying to report, not on the whole table, it's not going to scan the whole table. So compression, now there are compression ratios uh, when you uh, store data in column because whatever redundancy of data is there, now uh, it stores at uh, one, if it, doesn't, if it does not have uh, any primary key that, has, that has been changed. It means it only stores existing values, so no aggregates, so you do not, don't have to have uh, redundant uh, uh, tables or so aggregator something I would need to create another table where you need to do uh, the summarization now you don't have to do that when you don't you do, you cannot have to uh, there are uh, non materialized views so no data duplication so partitioning is to break larger tables into smaller tables based on time or suppose say you want to act based on a month can go for, for the particular partition and access data. So for larger uh, data sets and complex com computation, you can use partition. Then real-time replication. So whenever there are any changes in the source, at the same time data will be replicated into the uh, OLAP systems. So this is what we have uh, the middle layer, so different uh, mechanisms to replicate data from source. As you know, we have seen SAP LD. SAP LD is for some landscape transformation. It 
replication server from source SAP LG with SAP or non SAP. It is uses trigger based mechanism to replicate data in real time, TPL batch processing. That is SAP data provisions, but not in real time. It's batch. The HANA system. Also, you can use private replication server in the use of non SAP systems based on log based, it is a log based technology but it is real time. Now HANA direct extract function, DXC, uh, direct extractor connection. So, so uh, direct extraction connection is uh, where you already have a BW extractor in your stores. So those extractors, normally what we do, we replicate those extractors. Now get all the data and then do reporting in BW, right? Now you, you, have, you can directly bring those extractors into SAP HANA. Now, now whatever extractors results that when it produces data that it produces, you can use in HANA. It means so the logic that is already there, you can build, you can get data from source and then report in HANA. Also, you can use the <coughs> event streams, type-based event stream processor. Now, whenever there are events generated in the source. Suppose say uh, you are using a car and then uh, temperature increases. Uh, now you want to generate an event, right? Whenever there is any temperature increase more than 70, the event should be generated. Now those events also you can you can analyze in HANA. So event stream processor and uh, Sybase replication server are the products from Sybase. Now data services is the product from uh, business objects. SAP Direct Extractor Connection is leveraging the BW extractors. SAP LT replication server gets data in real time into SAP HANA. It can be used for both SAP or non SAP, but it is trigger based. Now this is what uh, SUSE Linux. So SAP HANA uses uh, SUSE Linux operating system. Or this is what SUSE Linux looks like. So here you have SAP HANA Studio. Now this is the terminal whether uh, you want to on the HANA system or you want to off the HANA system, start HANA, start, stop HANA, you can directly do it in to the Linux. So this is what administrators have access to. But as a developer, we are going to directly access SAP HANA Studio which is the front end of HANA. So this is HANA Studio, the screen is HANA Studio. We have a mod, we have different perspectives over here. We have a model perspective, you have a administrative perspective. Model perspective is where uh, you can do modeling, you can create attributes, you can create calculations, you can create tables, you can create code procedures, you can create uh, column views. So all these views you can create here. Also administrative views are mainly used by administrators uh, to create users, to control the authorization. Now, now this is the picture uh, is not so clear. So here you can write say, your uh, uh, script statement uh, using an SQL script. So in HANA, you're going to use something called SQL script. Now here, uh, what I'm trying to show you is show you uh, show here is you have a table in ECC called MATNR, which is Metal Master. A metal master is a, it has a huge number of records. Now, what I'm trying to show you here is, show you here is, uh, when you try to access data from metal master on a relational disk based card DBMS, when you take longer time, the same uh, data when you try to replicate into SAP HANA using SAP SLP or uh, their services, when you try to execute uh, the data, it is quite faster. It is a thousand times more faster. So this is a HANA Studio. So here uh, you, you, we are seeing a model, model perspective. This is what developers are going to use. So you have a new analytic view, calculation view that you can create to create views and then you can get data from the source and do data provisioning. Data provisioning is what extraction Data modeling is what you build models and then reporting is used in SAP business objects. 
So if you see here, the size of the disk is uh, uh, 357 GB. So the same data when you when you try to basically store in memory, the data is being reduced because it is a column store. Now if you take the column store, the data, the data that you store on this is huge. Now it reduces when it stores on memory. That's what I'm trying to show you here. Now uh, so this is the time it takes uh, one millisecond to basically report on MATLR. The matter table that we are going to report. Okay. Now, so uh, when you try to uh, retrieve 37 summarized rows, now we basically uh, read from 20 million records. It takes around uh, 12 milliseconds. Now the same size of data on disk is about 3.5. Now what, what it means is when you're trying to report on the same data, here it is going to take 40 seconds. The same data if you're trying to report on memory, it's going to take 12 milliseconds. So HANA is over 1000 times faster when you're trying to report on memory. And data is also compressed more than 5 times in HANA. The same data that you store on, store on display as RDBMS, when you store on uh, in memory, it is data is five times lesser than you store on display as RDBMS. Now there is a, a retailer uh, basically doing a predictive analysis. Now he has 70 retailers and there are 40 billion records. The data is uh, 70 terabyte. Now to eliminate the uh, start during proportion, now previously they used to have, uh, they reduced around 5 to 2 days when they try to implement SAP HANA. So the time itself is reduced when they try to uh, do, do uh, new insights. Now you also have a uh, uh, water bottling company called uh, non food Spring. Now non food Spring when they try to report on a particular, uh, when they try to report on Oracle database, it used to take them 24 hours to generate a report. Now the same report, now it is generating on HANA, it only takes 3.8 seconds. So there is an improvement of 15,000 times. So there is an improvement of 50,000 times. So this is the improvement that uh, HANA shows as an in the database. Now let us see SAP HANA loading data using SAP data services. Now as you know SAP data services is an ETL tool which gets data in uh, batch mode. Uh, so data services is over here. So it's a middle layer. So what are the different data provisioning that we have? We can either use SAP business or data services to get data from source to load to HANA. You can use SAP SLP to get data in real time and also you can use SAP Service Specification Server also in real time. So data service is batch mode, SAP SLP is real time as well as service is real time. SLP can get data, basically uh, it's optimized for uh, SAP systems. Now SAP Service Specification Server it is optimized for non-SAP systems. Now still licensing is being worked out for SAP Sybase, uh, for Oracle and uh, IBM DB2, still they are working out, working out the licensing issues, still they have with Oracle and uh, uh, IBM DB2. Now SLT is a tool directly from SAP, you can either use for uh, SAP or non-SAP, both are real-time replication tools. The most popular tool is SLT, but for now still they have been uh, uh, talked to Oracle and uh, IBM to, uh, to to work out the licensing over there. So this is the uh, flow in the SAP data services. This is the source that you have. Uh, this is the query transform and this is the target. Now you can directly import the data from source. If you run a job, you can get data from the source and then to the target. Now this target is nothing but HANA database. 
Now this is a template table. When you get data from source and then put it into the template table, it creates a table in SAP HANA database. So it's equal to job over here. So it's it is for SAP data services. So it creates a table over here. It creates the table. So this is the table which is created here. Now, so this is what uh, SAP data services source to target. So this is the data that it has loaded, including the metadata. So introduction to BI, business intelligence introduction. Now these are the different uh, databases it has and then business objects can do reporting. Now it uses something called uh, universe. Universe is a semantic layer. It can connect to one source or multiple sources and then you can do the reporting here. I am going on a very high level but in future we are going to see all these tools in a very detailed level. Now you know, then we saw uh, a demo on this in uh, screenshots. Data services, fetch data, and then uh, the table is created in HANA, which is on in memory. Now business object BI can report on that particular table. Now in business object BI, you have different reporting tools called uh, Web Intelligence, Digital Report, Dashboard, Explorer, Mobile, Widgets, Live Office, Analysis, and then you have CMP and BA platform, BA launchpad. So these are the different tools that we have from business objects portfolio. So each tool has a different importance. Web business is used for ad hoc reporting, crystal, uh, for uh, pixel formatted reports, dashboards, highly aggregated view of data explorer. I can do Google type search on data, mobile. You can get data into a mobile using mobile apps. Widgets. We can uh, create widgets to have continuous uh, look on data. Live Office, basically a plugin, which connects to different uh, uh, Microsoft tools. You have Analysis for Office. It uses uh, OLAP. It's a web based tool. CMC is used for administration. And then BA Launchpad is a, uh, is a uh, single platform where all these tools will be uh, integrated into the launchpad. You can access the report to launchpad. This is the end user interface. End user UI. Now you have CMC. In CMC, you can do, you have to do the authentication. Once the authentication is given, you can log on. Uh, you can log on here. And the CMC is nothing but it's an uh, administration business of this BI. Now you also have. We also have BA Launchpad. BA Launchpad is the end user tool where whatever reports that are created by the developer, you can uh, use it in uh, BA Launchpad. So these are the different reporting tools that we have here. So on the high level, so you have different folders. In these different folders, you have different reports here. Now to execute one of the reports, this is the digital report, profit and loss statement. The data that has been published here is getting from HANA database. So HANA, how it gets data? Using different data positioning techniques. If it is a batch passing data services, if it is a real time and then from SAP to the SLT. If it is a non-SAP and even though you want real time, use Cygus application server. Uh, SAP also can, can get the data from non-SAP system, but it uses figure based technology. So this is the report that is getting the in-memory database, that is from HANA database. Okay. Now let us log on to the CMC. It's an uh, administrative console. Maintenance, do monitoring, do auditing. So this is for, it's an administrative uh, web access that you can do different administration in the central management console. Now let us see what business WebI can do. WebI is a tool for ad hoc reporting. Now in WebI, you can access to SAP HANA using a semantic layer. Now semantic layer is a middle middle layer. Now whenever you want to access uh, data in WebI, you have to go through a semantic layer or you can directly access web uh, text that is the uh, BW query designers. Also you can access files. Also here, uh, now this is the universe. So whatever I'm showing you here, 
semantic layer is nothing but it is universe over here. So you can data from universe, Excel, X. So these are the different uh, uh, means to get data into web intelligence. Now we can select we can select the universe. Now this is the uh, once you select the universe, these are the different objects we have in there. Different folders we have different objects like region, country. So this is what we are, we are trying to import the metadata from SAP HANA system. Because it's a reporting tool, you need to get all the uh, metadata via universe from HANA. Now you can drag and drop all these objects here. And then execute, you can use different prompts to receive data. And once you execute the data, is going to mainly for ad hoc reporting for users. Now you can also generate graphs reporting on HANA database. So finally a report is going to get generated like this on uh, this metadata and data you are directly getting from HANA database. So business objects explorer is a Google like search tool. Now you can also search objects. Now you see it can get it can directly connect to HANA. But in case of web intelligence it has to connect to semantic layer, semantic layer connects to HANA system. But in this case uh, in HANA you can directly access sorry, you can directly access to Explorer. So Explorer can directly report on HANA. No need to go through semantic layer. It can directly report from HANA. So uh, use the username and password. Now once it is executed you have a report something like this. Now you can do search step analysis. You can do search on objects as well as you can do search on data. Now when you do sales, it basically gives out the search for the sales report. Now once it gives out the sales report, also you can do, you can also search on different metadata or you can also search for data that is being present in the metadata. So this is the uh, artifacts that uh, that is displayed over here. So you have employee, supervisor, year, year quarter. Now. You can do different uh, filters. You can access. So this is the uh, reporting interface for Business Object Explorer. So you can generate different graphs. Now we're directly reporting all this data from SAP HANA database. Now Business Objects BI can also connect to HANA. One is Web Intelligence used for ad hoc analysis. Business Object Explorer to get uh, data. From HANA. Also, you can create dashboards. The dashboard you're going to use some a tool called Dashboard Designer. So you can create a dashboard like this using the Dashboard Designer. Now all this data again comes from SAP HANA. Now this is a different dashboard that you have. You can have a single view of all the data here. Now Business Object My Office is a plugin where you can connect to different Microsoft tools. So the public live office when you try to log in, uh, log in the public, you can try to connect to crystal reports, you can connect to interactive analysis, web intelligence, you can try to connect to universe. So you can access different uh, metadata, objects. You can use all these objects, execute. Now this is the result. Now this result again comes from HANA. Now this is an Excel interface. Now previously you, you have a dashboard and and then uh, you are also using Business of Explorer. Prior to that, we, we just saw uh, web intelligence for ad hoc analysis. Now this is uh, the data that you have in here. Also, you can export this data into PowerPoint. Also, you have Business of Widget. Now you can uh, create widgets, keep it on your desktop. You can do continuous monitoring. So what is happening uh, in the share market, you can see different channels, you can see different graphs. So yeah, the data is uh, shown in the real time, the widget. So business objects mobile for iPhone. Now you can also access business objects data using an iPhone. iPhone. Now you have different apps. Now you have an app over here, you click on this app, you can uh, access data. 
that you actually create in business objects BI. So this is business objects explorer for your access data from mobile. So this mobile application can see the other tool. It is a GUI based tool, not a web based tool. So it can get data from HANA, CSV, Freehand SQL, it can get data from Universe. Uh, this is a newly introduced tool from SAP. Behind SQL, you can connect to different SQL uh, databases. You can, write, you can write a custom code and then export this data to Visual Intelligence and then you can do the reporting over there. Use uh, maps. So uh, this is what uh, uh, Visual Intelligence can do. So in this course, uh, we are going to see uh, Whatever I shown on this slide, we are going to develop all these things in using SAP Business Object BI platform and then we are also going to see uh, data services, we will see SLP, we will see Cypress application server, uh, Business Object Mobile and also uh, try to uh, get data from different core systems that is ECC, and get data from non-SAP systems. You can uh, get in real time or in batch process. Uh, you can. Uh, we'll also see BW on HANA. So how BW? Uh, uh, the inflection about uh, HANA. Is. Any questions? You can uh, raise questions. I will uh, try to answer. Them. Yeah, I will. Uh, so in the course curriculum, at the part of HANA course curriculum, we'll start with the introduction of HANA. Then slowly we'll move on to uh, data provisioning. How to create models in HANA? How to use different data provisioning techniques? SAP data services, SQL, SLP, SAP application server. How to create uh, uh, attribute use, analytic use, calculation use? Uh, we'll write a logic in SQL script, and also uh, <coughs> do reporting on business objects BI leverage for the existing BW customers who are on, who are on Oracle database. And we'll also see a SAP HANA administration as a part of this course. Please raise your questions if you have other uh, answer the question. Unmuted. Hey, please tell me. Hello. Me. I can hear you. Please. Please go ahead. Yeah. I have five years experience in ERP, uh, functional side. Eh? Uh, whether uh, now can I change my career from ERP functional side to this career like SAP HANA? I, I have experience in a uh, little bit query writing and... Uh, ERP, uh, what, what was the ERP that you were working on? Uh, like I worked in two ERP product. One is like a desktop application like a separate separate EXE but currently working in uh, uh, Tatadux, the ERP name is Tatadux, which is Italian product. It's similar to SAP, we can say. Okay. Now, uh, thing is, SAP, I mean, uh, SAP can learn by everyone because a uh, lot of people coming from mainframe recently uh, who have trained a lot of people from non-SAP, non-SAP. It's not necessarily that they, they have to have uh, SAP knowledge, but the only thing is you need to more, uh, you need to put a little more effort. That's what is required. Mm. So whatever we discuss in the uh, during the course, that should be more than sufficient uh, uh, because I start from the basics. So what is the table? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I start from basic. What is the between column oriented, row oriented? What is compression? What is partition? What are indexes? What are aggregates? We start from very basics uh, in a very uh, very low level. Then slowly we will move on to uh, uh, SAP HANA, which is an industry based position. Then uh, what you can do in HANA, uh, what are the different uh, reporting tools. Uh, as you know, you already, you already have uh, knowledge in SQL. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that should be a very good start. It, it, does, it doesn't really matter uh, what, uh, from which application you have, uh, what application that you are using. But the only thing is, uh, because I basically start from basics, and then we uh, see a very advanced topics. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Actually, from my this is Dilavar Azman. From my side, there is a query. Uh, yeah, please, I'm not much uh, uh, well versed with uh, this uh, query and all, but uh, I know basics of uh, BA actually. I have done one full cycle uh, BA. 
data extraction and uh, uh, up to reporting level I have done uh, BA cycle. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay. Now if you uh, think, uh, that is actually uh, very, very good. Now uh, when, 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 we, when I start teaching actually, uh, so suppose say, when I say uh, data is flowing from this system to this system and from again it, we are getting data from uh, this system, we are doing reporting, you are trying, you can understand uh, if data is flowing and we are trying to report, so trying to understand me that it should be more than sufficient. Uh, yeah. And also, I am having a certain experience in third-party system, uh, which is the data transferring related only, which is we will, we will call it, call it as host auto. Uh, it's a kind of automation tool where data from one system to other system, based on your triggering, uh, the data will flow, which will come to some uh, certain uh, uh, place like a file, and then later on it will transfer uh, based on the query what we are giving uh, to the database. And again, excellent, excellent. data will come back and uh, trigger to the another database and it will execute here. Uh, like okay, that, I have a, a relational idea about all those things. But uh, um, when I uh, come across your uh, session, hello, there are uh, so many other... Uh, Demo, demo, SAP, demo, Murishna, Vandara. Please unmute yourself when you talk. Pichu. Please, please mute yourself when you talk. Okay, uh, let me continue. Pichu. Yeah. Please, uh, if you are speaking, uh, put your uh, thing on mute. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mute for sitting. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Let, let me continue. Uh, there are several possibilities of HANA usage, uh, yes, as yes, I yes, understood yes. from you. And uh, yes. whether uh, yes. the how the people expect uh, HANA, whether uh, we should be expert in all those areas or uh, specific areas, uh, the requirement will be. Uh, yes. How can we fit for all those things. Yeah, very good, very good question. Uh, so, uh, what I suggest to you is, uh, as you are from, uh, you understand what is uh, uh, reporting, you know what is data provisioning, you know, you understand data modeling. So, uh, so you know, the year of 2013 is going to have a market for uh, uh, BW on HANA, as well as reporting, as well as extraction, now, whatever we see here, even though HANA can support uh, uh, multiple applications, and it's because you know every database can support any application for that matter. But HANA mainly uh, used for BW, BW on HANA. Now we are going to generate. Now BW is one area where uh, there is a lot of focus because BW is an enterprise data warehousing. Now in the enterprise data warehousing, what happens is all the customers are on the Oracle database. The issue here is. Most of the customers are un unhappy, not because of uh, SAP BW, but the performance that is uh, given out when it's doing reporting. Now, if a particular report takes around uh, three to four hours, it was generated previously. Now, in HANA, when it executed, it takes only two milliseconds. Now, that is the kind of performance that it gives. Now, if you see 2013, most of the customers are going for uh, BW on HANA, and also uh, business objects BI uh, reporting on BW. Uh, so what I basically suggest is uh, the course that we are going to see is basically uh, we, are, we are going to learn from HANA database. The database itself we are going to learn. Now, you can also keep experience in BW, you can also keep experience in the BODS, where I am going to uh, this, uh, the course curriculum will be the part of this. So either you can apply, now what I am basically trying to tell you is, now we are trying to learn SAP HANA, now it is a DB which is a database. Also, you are trying to learn SAP PODS, which is an ETL tool. Now, also, you are trying to learn SAP BW, which is a modeling tool. And also, you are learning SAP BOBI, which is a reporting tool. Now, more than this, no one is going to expect 
Uh, this is for ETL to get data from source system to the target. Now this is the modeling uh, where you're going to create DS source input queues and also you're going to uh, do it in SAP HANA DB, based of analytic queues. Now if you have a combination of all these things, now uh, there's a lot of chance and then now, a lot of customers are going to migrate uh, uh, in 2013. Now there are about 20,000 customers on BW. Now if you see SAP Q4 results uh, recently published, about 1,000 customers have already migrated to uh, HANA. Now in that 800 customers are only from BW side, BW on HANA. Okay. So we, we are going to learn SAP HANA DB and then uh, BW on HANA and then BODS which is an ETL tool and BOBI and including you have an edge, edge when you have SAP SLT, 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 SLT uh, which is a real time uh, uh, work which works on a trigger based. Okay. So every tool if you see in the market, uh, you have a modeling should have a modeling tool. Now once you build the metadata, data should be brought from different source systems and keep in those models. Now suppose say. Modeling is something like a bottle which doesn't have any water. Yeah, a right. bottle is only a container, right? Container, right? right. So, so you know, when you bring water into the uh, bottle, it's nothing but you're bringing content to the containers. You're bringing data. Of data, you bring basically through ETL, Extract, Transformation, and Load. Now, BODS is a tool that is actually used for ETL. Now, it's a very popular tool. Now, again, once you uh, model uh, and then you bring data into these models, you need to do reporting uh, for different uh, uh, to uh, to give this report to the end users. Now, to have a modeling tool, you have basically six on HANA. Right. Okay. So right. when you have this combination, it should be uh, it's a very good combination. I suggest. Yeah. It's excellent combination. Now there is a huge demand for this combination. So that is what that, that, that is what we have seen, we have seen here. I have to also show you here. Now recently, uh, two guys got uh, one guy got an IBM and BW on HANA. HANA database. You see my screen, right? This is HANA database. Now you have SAP data services and the ETL. You have Firebase application server. You have SLT, now this is BW here, which is a source system. Now BW will directly come on HANA. Now if you see my, yes, I will show you the slides here. I have different slides, that is for tomorrow's class. So just step here. So tomorrow we are going to see this. Now please see, uh, this is a side by side scenarios. Side by side scenarios where you have business suit, suit of application to get data into HANA. You can have BW side by side application, you can get data to HANA. And also you can have a business suit and then get data to HANA. So you can have a, a pop, a pop, you can build different applications on HANA. So, uh, so these are the different platform. You see SAP HANA platform edition, enterprise edition solution perspective. This is for uh, reporting and this is for uh, BW data services will be here. Extended application. So here you're going to see as a database the course. So here you're going to see as HANA Enterprise Edition. Now you're going to see direct extracted data service reporting solution from HANA. So there, there is nothing more that SAP offers more than this. So that's what we are uh, discussing here. So BODS, BW, BOBI, SAP HANA DB. It worked, right? So any more uh, questions? Please ask me. Yeah. At it and uh, about how to practice it because uh, this is a huge actually right from scratch uh, from basic even step by step if we are going we have to practice uh, to get the perfection or uh, to the uh, level of expectation by the company for that uh, yeah. what is the option you are going to provide to us actually we will we have an online service so whatever I teach in class should be more than sufficient because uh, it's not that I'm telling like this that's what people have told me. Uh, so whatever we teach, whatever we try to focus, whatever we should, because it's new product and uh, uh, I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say is, in product is new, so yeah. it has a different it has different integrations. Now it has integration with SAP, it has integration with 
such as if you have many different many layer tools or like data services, uh, landscape transformation. Now, so really uh, to understand this, uh, as you told, practice lot of practice is necessary. So whenever we teach in class, uh, you uh, try to follow those steps and then uh, do hands on. That should be more than sufficient actually. We, we need a sincere effort. That is more most necessary. Yeah, that's understood. That's important. Yeah. yeah. Hello, or do you have any server server like that? Yeah, we have we have server side. We have uh, VW1 HANA server, we have uh, SLB, we have data services. Whatever we are showing you here, 64 GB RAM. Mm -hmm. We can use for practice, no, that server? Yeah, you can use the practice. We're going to use the server for practice. For practice. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to provide the server for practice. We're going to provide the server for practice. The course content, uh, you, you, you will provide uh, course materials, right? Yeah, we are going to provide course material, we are going to provide SAP material directly from SAP. So whatever SAP is teaching, so we are going to provide you that material along with the uh, server access. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, and uh, uh, server access duration, like uh, any... Uh, server access duration? Yeah. Any yeah. restriction over there? Yeah, actually... Uh, these things I think uh, the uh, administration will discuss with you. Because I am just an inspector over here. Okay. And my, my thing is only to teach class. So maybe we, I will just tell them. Yeah. Maybe you can ask these questions yeah, in the, 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 the classes. They will uh, discuss in detail with you how, how we can do this. Because uh, yeah. uh, this question uh, are probably not the right person. I'm not the right person. Okay. Yeah, understand. understand. And one, one important query. Where is that uh, several systems are involved, uh, the yeah. server administrator or the administrative person may be involved in uh, the connectivity related things like uh, uh, adapters and other things that they will look after and uh, we are only the, uh, the developer uh, who will work on systems. Is exactly. it right? Exactly. 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 Okay. Because there, there uh, may be some way administrators will actually do administration, uh, hardware configuration, and, uh, integration. They are only the consultants, ARA consultants. Okay, so we but are handling the content. Yeah, but still I will uh, uh, run through all those uh, topics. Okay, as it is a new, the normally uh, the company may try to recruit a single person who could handle all those things. Uh, I, I'm not 100% I'm not, uh, uh, right, maybe.